Hi, I'm Dr. David Dobson. Welcome to Conversations. Today, my guest is Dr. Helen Cripps. Helen is a senior lecturer in the School of Business and Law at Edith Bowen University. She teaches, researches, and consults on innovation, entrepreneurship, startups, and data analytics. She received her PhD in Management Information Systems and Marketing from Edith Cowan University. Helen is the daughter of horticulturist John Cripps, the creator of Pink Lady Apples. The Pink Lady is one of the first apples to be marketed as a brand. We will be discussing apples and the branding of apples today. It's a great pleasure to have you with me today, Helen. It's a pleasure to be here. And thank you so much for reaching out to me because we've never met in real life. We've only met virtually. Thank you. Where did your interest in marketing apples come from? Well, as a child growing up, my father was actually involved in horticultural research for the Agricultural Department of Western Australia. Um, and he decided that he reckoned he could he could actually breed an apple that could make money for um, apple growers in Western Australia. So he said to his boss, can I do an apple breeding program? And his boss said, no. And he said, can I do an apple breeding program? And his boss said, as long as it doesn't interfere with all your other really important work. <laughs> Turns out that his apple breeding program became the most important work that he ever did. So um, as a child, we were uh, subject to the trial apples that came through our house. <laughs> um, and uh, we had to taste them uh, when he brought them home from the orchard because it took uh, probably, it took about 15 years to actually get the Pink Lady as an, a variety, but uh, probably another 10 years to get it fully into the market. And it's now a worldwide brand. Uh, yeah. So where did my interest come? Well, uh, he's, I, I was interested because he, uh, I followed what he did and he okay. was recognized for his breeding, but it wasn't until he passed away last year that okay. I started to understand the impact of the Pink Lady internationally yeah. um, as an apple, because it was the first apple to be trademarked. Yeah. Um, and uh, it depends in America. I don't think they take the trademark. So you might get Crips Pink Apples, but okay. uh, around the world they're sold if they're trademarked as pink ladies and they have a little love heart on them yeah. because we love pink ladies. So, <laughs> um, yeah. and since then everybody else has trademarked their apples. So you probably can list off lots of apples, but that's where I became interested. And I really wanted to know why had it been such a, such a successful apple. So that's why I started to research it. Yeah. Yeah. I find your story interesting that, you know, you and your family were the first uh, test market because you have to try all those apples for last, 25 years, so a yes. of, lot of eating apples. Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. And we, we had to give the pips back so he could plant them. So to create a new variety, you have to yeah. get the apples to fruit, then you have to take the seeds, plant them, then you have to graft them to get the next lot of fruit. So that's why it yeah. takes many, many, many years because it was done with breeding and not with, um, uh, with gene editing. So... Yeah. Uh, it wasn't GMO, so that's why um, it's it's quite famous because it's come from a breeding program. Oh. Your dad is the legend behind Western Australia's famous pink lady apples. Can you share a little bit about what it was like during the time he was researching breeding pink lady? Well, my first memories of is going up with my parents to the research station on the weekend. So out of working hours, he went up to do some crosses. So my my mother was press ganged into climbing up and down ladders to put to put pollen in and put paper bags over them right. so you get the right crosses. Yeah. Um, I knew that he was doing the work because he actually had to, the research station moved away from the city where we were based or we were where we lived okay. uh, to a place called Manjum up in Western Australia. So he would spend his weeks down there. So he was absent a lot when I was a teenager. And but I didn't realize why it was so important than what he was doing. We just thought he was yeah. doing apple breeding. Yeah. But in in the 1990s, he started going to England with boxes of pink ladies and actually promoting them. And then I started to realize how important this was, what he was doing. Um, yeah. But I think it was only after he passed away and okay. I've, I've visited people around the world. I was visiting people in uh, Europe uh, earlier this year to meet yeah. the growers, yeah. people I'd never met. 
but they all wanted to meet me because my father was the man who had created this apple for whom many of their families had become quite uh, wealthy or successful from. So right. it was really important. But it was only really after he passed away that yeah. I realised the impact that he'd had on people's yeah. lives. Yeah. So uh, doing his apple breeding. Right. And your dad was horticulturist and, and you yeah. know, he's doing amazing things in, in, in the orchard. And but you chose your path to be a academia in business, so I, I, I would think he, that you know <laughs> he told me not to be a, res, a a researcher. He said I should go into. Originally, I started off working in uh, business, uh, okay. and I ended up doing policy for the government and then yeah. local government. We have the same system in Canada where we have three tiers of government. Yeah. But he told me don't become a scientist. Okay. Um, because he said scientists don't make money and we don't make any money from the apples because it was part of his job. Yes. So he was a bit, 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 uh, what's the word? I wasn't yeah. quite too happy about us being scientists. So, yeah. but my nephew is actually a scientist. So we, we rebelled and I went into academia and he said in one of his, um, uh, oral histories, he said that he would have, if he hadn't been a research scientist, he would have liked to be an academic like I was. So, okay. but but he loved he loved his research, um, yeah. and he liked to prove people wrong. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> they said he couldn't do it, so he went out and did it. He was very. Mum said he was very stubborn. I just say he was very determined. So yeah, to get because get, <laughs> get that done. So, um. But yeah, it, it it took him a long time. Uh, but there's more apples that he's bred that are um, are famous. So there were four original apples, and he's uh, then he bred one called it's called an Australia Bravo, but it'll be marketed overseas as Saluna, and that's okay. got dark red skin and a yeah. very bright white flesh. So um, and they have antioxidant pro properties, and they have health giving properties. Dad's apples as well. So um, he was very proud of that. That's great. So, why do apples need to be sold as a brand? Okay, so apples, you, you think of like, if we talk about Apple as in the iPhone and the product, every time yes. you make an iPhone, it's consistently the same. Yes. You would not believe how hard it is to get horticultural product produce yes. from the farm gate to the supermarket, to yes. your table, yes. that's going to be identical because it's not manufactured, it's grown. Exactly. And so by creating yeah. trademarks and, yeah. and brands around yeah. apples is it's a promise of the quality that you're going to get. Okay. So people, when they buy pink lady, they expect it to be, have a pink color. Yeah. Um, it used to have a bi color, but now there's a different, there's a sport or there's a variant, which gives you that very dark pink color. Okay. Um, and they expect it to be a combination of sweet and tart. Yeah. Uh, and they expect it to always be really crisp and dad bred the apple so you could store mm. it. So there's mm. these qualities of the apple which are reflected in the brand. Yeah, okay. But if you buy a pink lady anywhere in the world, you expect yeah. that pink lady to be okay. to be the same each time, to be as good as the previous experience because okay. that's what the brand promises. Right. Now, the back end of that is really, really, really challenging yeah. uh, and really difficult for the farmers and and for the the supply chain yeah. uh, for the supermarkets yeah. and now with uh oh uh, now with global uh, uh with climate change yes the producers are really struggling to produce yeah. that consistent quality yeah. all the time yes. that the brand yeah. uh the brand uh, yeah. uh markets or the brand brand says is is there or the brand um Try to think yeah. of the right word, but the, the brand uh, statement is that it will be this quality. And if you don't get good quality apples to the supermarket and yeah. they're branded as pink ladies, but the quality isn't there, then people go like, well, that brand's not delivering what it's promised. Right. And that's really complicated with horticultural products. Yeah. Everything, everything from apples. But yeah. yes, there's a multitude of brands now. There's Kanzi, there's uh, yeah. Jazz, there's Big yeah. Time, there's Cosmic yeah. Crisp, there's, yeah. I, I think there's um, there's lots of different Apple brands that are all yeah. competing, yeah. Uh, but the consumption of apples is reducing. Oh, so that's a problem. Oh, why is that? I think because there's so many other fruits that compete with it. Like apples okay. were a traditional fruit and that yes. was very much part of, 
of yeah. what um, people were used to eating. But there's, yeah. I know in Australia, there's a proliferation of different fruit. There's now this market where you can get fruits. Yeah. The seasonality of fruits oh, has disappeared. So people can get fruits from all around the world. So, yeah. um, you know, and people think, oh, well, you know, uh, I can buy, you know, apricots or I can buy yeah. an apple. Well, mm -hmm. or I can buy uh, a mango or I can buy an apple. And yeah. uh, so that yeah. seasonality is gone as well. So apples yeah. were always seasonal, but now because of the input, they're, they're, all, year, they're yeah. all year round. Yeah. So, yeah, it's yeah. it's a traditional product and it was a yeah. traditional part of people's lives, but we've yeah. got lots of choice now. Yeah, I, I remember when I was a kid, I, I, and I, I don't know who said it, but someone said, you know, apple a day, keep a doctor away. And and that was one of the motivation. I don't know how true it is, but 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 we so, think, okay, if you eat apple, we'll be healthy. So, so we're now trying to do research. So there's been some research in Western Australia around uh, the poly polyphenols, which are underneath the skin of the pink lady, and they help reduce your blood pressure. But we're not at the point that we can make state. So then we have yeah. to make sure that's completely tested before we yeah. add that to the brand. Right. Yeah. So we're yeah. talking about science and a yeah. brand. Yeah. We're talking about something that's grown, yeah. not something that is manufactured. So it's yeah. it's very complex. Yeah. So that the new apple that dad uh, that came from dad's breeding program that he actually bred yeah. the the Bravo or Saluna. You'll probably see the Saluna in in the um, in North America. Okay. But that doesn't go brown. So you can okay. cut it up and the next oh, day yeah, yeah, yeah. In, hasn't yeah. oxidized. Yeah. So that's big in Australia to put in kids' lunches because kids don't like the apples that turn brown, no. you see, because they're very fussy. <laughs> so um yeah, that yeah. that's why um that's yeah. one of the the other yeah. aspects. So it's so then yeah. how do you differentiate your product? Yeah. How do you create an apple brand and product that is different yeah. from all the other ones on the shelf? Because we have multiple yeah. ones at the moment so why would you pick a pink yeah. lady over um uh, a cosmic crisp or um you know or a honey crisp which was yeah. i think an american yeah. apple which beat yeah. the pink lady beat it and the guy said <laughs> if there was no pink lady honey crisp would be the most famous <laughs> apple but unfortunately the pink lady and the four, they were the first people to really do branding around an apple yeah. um and that was really really strong and that brand promise yeah. meant that the apple had good um yeah. was it uh, recognition yeah. and the other thing was it was yeah. high quality and it was yeah. and it's also usually a little bit more expensive yeah. but price is often an indicator of quality yeah so that's yeah. the other thing as well yeah I, I think you also raise a very important point the brand promise because uh like you know if you manufacture a thing, you can be certain of size and shape and other specification. But with apple grown in a natural environment, you know, so much you can control certain factor. But after all, it's it's a weather base, it's a climate base, it's a temperature. Yeah. So it could definitely create a challenge for the growers. So pink lady is really unusual because it's got the longest growing cycle of any apple. So okay. it has 200 days in the sunshine, oh, wow. which is part of the brand promise. But the yeah. other problem is that last year in the Northern Hemisphere, they had a really bad growing season. Oh, okay. So uh, their apples didn't go as red. So at the end, okay. so the apples oh. start off a yellow color and it's to do with the light okay. and the sun and the, the variation in temperature between night and day. So you have to have a large variation okay. and that actually gets the apple to okay. color up. Okay. Um, and the apples didn't color up that well. So the okay. brand promise was for a particular red but they actually sold slightly less red apples, which okay. could have affected the brand. So yeah. again, okay. that was outside of the control of the growers because right. they can't control the climate. But the yeah. brand promise was for a yeah. block red apple, but they had more yeah. green on the apple this year or last year, sorry, in the Northern Hemisphere season. Okay. So yeah. we, we, we've we had a very dry season mm. um, this year. So mm. we are not sure what, what the quality of our apples are going to be. Uh, yeah. coming in Western Australia. So again, yeah. people come to expect that consistent quality, but it's really hard when you have the external environment that causes right. that difference. So yeah. that's one of the challenges. You asked me what the challenges were. That's yeah. one of the challenges is the climate is uncontrollable. Yeah. Um, 
And a fun fact is that English people like smaller apples than Australians and Asians like much bigger apples. So oh, pink yeah. ladies are sold at different sizes around the world according wow. to the taste of the consumers. Okay, that's pretty fascinating. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> different so, size of apples, yeah. 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 Yeah, but the, the best apples, uh, the other problem with the pink lady was it's grown yeah. in Western Australia, Yeah. whereas we have a really high biosecurity, so we yeah. don't have a lot of the um, uh, diseases yeah. that are in, in elsewhere. We don't have apple scab, for example. So okay. we can produce much higher quality apples, but when people yeah. um, uh, grow pink ladies yeah. elsewhere, they have to spray them more. Oh. But we don't have to because we don't have apple scab. So that's okay. another thing. So yeah. that's also changing consumer demand is the yeah. reduction in the amount that apples are sprayed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the EU has different, um, what's well, the word, has different criteria. Okay. So we have to spray them less. And then mm. before we have to develop fruit that is more disease resistant. And that's okay. that's a big trend in yeah. horticulture is yeah. a way, is finding ways to not have to spray or not have to use pesticides or any okay. chemicals in the production of those apples okay. and yeah so that that's one of the big changes yeah and the eu is the tightest market okay. uh and so they set the standard across the world so, so we we already discussed some of the challenges as you discuss are there other challenges that apple brands face competition from each other so that's a <laughs> okay. really big problem i okay. mean yeah. And and each country wants to have a brand that's theirs yeah. or they want to produce new brands. Yeah. And the growers want brands that are going to cut through with the consumers. Yeah. So it's become it's gone from being a blue ocean when dad yeah. when they launched the Pink Lady yeah. to becoming yeah. a really red ocean now with apples. Yeah. And so the the only the reason why they've released the Bravo is because yeah. of that that quality that it doesn't go brown. So yeah. that's a competitive advantage. But you know, uh, and different consumer markets. Asians like much sweeter apples. European like tartar, more tart apples. So okay. it depends depends what market you're going to. But their biggest problem is yeah. that there's so much competition. And because the Pink Lady was so successful, they yeah. set about breeding all these new varieties and marketing all these new varieties. Okay. And, and that's caused way too much competition. And okay. so it's driving the prices down that the growers get for the apples. Okay. So yeah. in, in Western Australia, yeah. the apple growers are actually pulling trees out yeah. because they can't make money from it. And the other wow. thing is, uh, I, I yeah. know that the growers in, in Europe, their land is worth more for housing than it is for yeah. apples. That's true. Yeah. So that's but that's one yeah. of the challenges is, yeah. and then people say, but we want the cheapest apples possible. We don't want yeah. to pay for, for yeah. expensive apples. Yeah. But if they don't pay for... Yeah. Um, for that those apples, yeah. yeah, then they won't be grown. Yeah, so there'll be no apples. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before I forget, I want to also ask you. Uh, you know, growers because they don't, as you mentioned earlier, uh, they don't sell directly to the consumer. So there is like no. a middle, uh, middle person, yep. and I yep, think yep. that might be a factor the way yep. Apple arrive to consumers, the price they pay. Yep. So in Australia, we only have two supermarkets so okay. the apple growers sell it to a pack house okay. and they distribute it to the supermarkets but because we've only got two dominant supermarkets yeah. they drive the price down sure uh in europe they have cooperatives and those cooperatives the growers sell to that cooperative yeah uh and that cooperative then holds the price yeah so yeah but then the growers have to deal with the cooperative so there is no if you'd like to invent a perfect supply chain for apples, we'd really like to hear about it because yeah. <laughs> it is very difficult and yeah. it's a historical industry. Yeah. It's a very, yeah, and it's a very old industry. Like they yeah. and they're all family growers, generally yeah. family growers. Yeah, uh, and we haven't got to the point where we're getting the amalgamation of orchards. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things I'm doing here, you asked about initiatives. Yeah. is that I'm working on an apple heritage and produce trail. So okay. people can find out where their apples come from yeah. so that they can find out where their apples are growing, Yeah. Okay. who grows them. Okay. And then they can find out the history of apple growing in, in okay. say, in Western Australia. 
nice. they can taste products from the apples. So we make cider, we make gin, we make okay. uh, dried apples, we make apple juice, all sorts of things yeah. from apples in, in Western yeah. Australia. Yeah. So they can find out where, where that is and they can know that that was produced in Western Australia okay. from apples grown in Western Australia. Oh, nice. So you have that kind of food sovereignty. Okay. Um, and we... And so, and the other thing is about this thing called agritourism. Yeah. So people then go and travel from the big city, which is Perth here, nice. and they go out to the the southwest yeah. of Western Australia, and they yeah. meet the people that grow the apples. They nice. see them in the orchard, yeah. Um, and they they get that that again that brand love, but that's not just for a particular yeah. brand, but for yeah. the producers and for the apple industry in Western yeah. Australia. So yeah. that's. Very, very important that people yeah. understand where their food comes from yeah. and how hard it is to grow that food yeah. and how hard those people work yes. and what the challenges are. So when they go to buy in the supermarket, they go yeah. like, okay, that's a dollar more expensive uh, than something that's imported from overseas, but yeah. I know that's bred here. Yeah. The other thing that will change the whole apple market is when we start looking at the carbon in the supply chain. Right. Because at the moment in Europe, they ex yeah. import apples from the southern hemisphere in their off season. Yeah. And yeah. so in France, you buy apples from Chile when it's out of season. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and that Probably works at the moment. But when yeah. you're looking at the carbon footprint of yeah. the supply chain, yeah. that yeah. won't work. So I yeah. think we we're going to go back to much more locally grown produce rather yeah. than exporter yeah. produce. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I also like the, what you mentioned about this uh, going to the growers and and because that remind me of you know the vineyard the wineries when people go and try the wine go to vineyard and there's their own experience so I think it's it's a wonderful that that mm -hmm. people can go to these different orchards and 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 enjoy different types yeah. of apple offering not just apple fruit but maybe perhaps apple wine you know <laughs> so yeah. And that's what we're, we're trying to convince the growers yeah. or trying yeah. to encourage yeah. them to diversify their production. Yeah. There's also, yeah. they're yeah. looking at, at, at olives now as yeah. well. Yeah. Compensation is a big thing because the apples are growing in really, really nice parts of yeah. uh, Western Australia. But when I was in Italy, I was in this amazing area called Bolzano that was just yeah. Beautiful. And then the valley was filled with, with uh, vineyards and yeah. orchards and it was just amazing. Yeah. So... And then people can see, you know, where their, their food comes from yeah. um, and understand, yeah, un understand the 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 sweat and toil that goes into that and yeah. the and the livelihoods that they're supporting by buying the apples. But, yeah, yeah a, a lot of people don't know that it takes 200 days to get a pink lady apple yeah. and that's a long time for an apple to be on a tree and that's yeah. high risk. Yeah. So um, yeah. maybe they should understand that and then they might love the apple as much yeah. as I love the apple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, uh, taking apple as a snack in school was not uncommon, but now there's a lot of like variety of snacks for children yeah. available. Like, mm -hmm. so if kids want to take something school, I don't think apple is their first choice. No. So how, and, how how do you compete all different snacks out there? <laughs> well, what we need to do is start talking about price per serve. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of like the music bar, so the apples are now in competition. You, you great point you brought up yeah. because the apples are in competition with fast food, with snack food. Yeah. yeah. In Australia, we have this thing where by the checkout, yeah, they have a basket of fruit yeah. that's free. Oh, oh wow. Okay. So that kids can, if they say, "Mum, mum, mum, I want a snack when I can," you know, I want a lolly <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> There's fruit there for them to have because it's okay. about healthy choices. Wonderful. So in Australia, a cup of takeaway coffee, which you're not supposed to take away anything anymore, <laughs> but a cup of coffee costs about five dollars. Oh, An yeah. apple costs about about five Australian dollars, which is uh, yeah. probably about three fifty US yeah. or four fifty US. Yeah. But an apple for that amount of money, you can get um, half a kilo of apples yeah, for one wonderful. cup of coffee. Yeah. So if you're looking <laughs> at a value for money, yeah. And even like against a, a chocolate bar, an apple is still Absolutely. half the price of a chocolate bar. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. but the nutritional quality and the nutritional density yeah. of yeah. that apple is uh, much greater than a chocolate bar. So, yeah, lots of calories, no, yeah. no nutrition or nutrition yeah. and fiber yeah. in a pre-packaged product, which is yeah. an apple. 
I guess we, we have to convince these uh, kids to really go for apples. <laughs> well, I, and that's um, part of what's happened after dad yeah. passed away was they asked me what, uh, what would we do to celebrate my dad? And I said, yeah. let's start a PhD scholarship oh, nice. um, in horticulture. So the West Australian yeah. um, Agricultural Department where dad yeah. used to work has actually funded that uh, PhD oh. scholarship. Okay. Um, and so but I was talking to somebody from the uh, poem, uh, the poem industry, and she said, yeah. we found the food efficacy of apples or of, of horticultural produce yeah. so we can market it because the government and um, what's the word, health organisations, we have a thing called um, Healthways here. Yeah. So um, public education about the food quality and eating yeah. healthy of eating yeah fresh fruit fresh vegetables uh -huh. and how that improves that has health um benefits as well uh, -huh. uh and also budget benefits because we're yeah. all suffering from the rising increasing cost of living inflation, yeah. um inflation so all the fast food companies are marketing things that are high in sugar and fat yes. but we're not getting out and marketing things that are of high quality and yeah. the best yeah. public marketing campaign yeah. that was ever run was in Australia yeah. to stop smoking. So we have 12% of the population that smokes now down from 25%. Oh, really and we did this massive campaign from the 70s to get people to stop smoking. Oh, if yeah. I see someone with a cigarette in, in my in my home city, I'll probably see maybe one person once a week, yeah. if that. Yeah. None of my friends smoke. No one I know smokes. Yeah. Because it's it's yeah. now public taboo. So yeah. if we could do that with sugary soft drinks yeah. and with all sorts of things yeah. that are unhealthy, yeah. where we said no, I'm going to yeah. have an apple rather yeah. than a chocolate bar. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we I, don't have that kind of yeah. marketing behind it. Yeah. So I I I joke, but Instagram is my source of all wisdom. Now that's a joke, folks. I am yeah. joking. <laughs> but if you follow Pink Lady Apples in Europe, because they're yeah. marketed there under the trademark. Okay. fabulous marketing that they have they've done a really really good job okay. but they have cribs a ki uh, kids pink so they're trying to market oh. to children because they're oh. the consumers they have competitions for them okay. so they're trying to get little and that they're usually the smaller apples which okay. are usually the seconds okay. but they're now marketing them under the kids pink so they can market okay. them for a, a good oh. value as well but oh, i look but there, it really does need a lot more public marketing because, yeah. you know, never have we had so much food, but so not yeah. much malnutrition through yeah. the eating of, of, of non-fresh products. But yeah. it's very hard because you, you, your, your pre-packaged yeah. um, product, yeah. the, the quality is consistent. However, yeah. you know, there, we are doing more stuff around yeah. ugly vegetables because they have the same, they're just not as pretty because the supermarkets simply only want to eat pretty things. And I think that, I think the buying local, yeah. buying direct from the, so we have farm yeah. gates in yeah. Western Australia now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got some amazing cherries when I was down okay. south recently okay. uh, because they didn't come from a supermarket, they came from the actual producer. Nice. Um, so very short supply, shortening supply chains yeah. um, and food provenance, understanding and this is a big thing in Australia, like with Wagyu beef and yeah. uh, so premium products. Yeah. Where does that fruit come from? How is it being treated in the supply chain? Right. And what's the quality when it arrives in, yeah. in the local shop or in the farmer's market? And I think okay. I'm, I'm trying to get the growers in Western Australia, because uh, I'm involved with them a bit, about putting QR codes on the apples eventually as oh, part nice. of the trail. So people yeah. can say, oh, if I pick yeah. this up in Woolworths, this came from Newton's Orchard. Oh, yeah. So this came from Lister's Orchards. Wonderful. And I've been, I've seen that orchard. Wonderful. Wow. That's a wonderful idea. So that, yeah. yeah. So that creates, that, again, that brand love. Connection I, I want with people... the farmer and the grower. Yeah. Yeah. yeah where the people and, come from. Yeah. And in this digital world, that's really yeah. important for people yeah. to understand. Yeah. And have that personal connection because yeah. I think that's what's been missing. Yeah. I mean, I love technology. Yeah. We're talking. Yes. But um, it also means about people understanding where their food comes from and the quality of that food yes. and how that quality relates to the price. Right, yeah. They're not buying an apple, they're supporting a local grower. So 
uh, how do you want future generation to remember your 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 father's legacy in the Apple industry? That's a, I I looked at that question and I thought about it. How do I? I want people to know that, like a lot of people here, don't know that the Pink yeah. Lady was actually grown, was actually bred yes. in Western Australia. Nice. Uh, that we in fact have three successful apples that have come from that breeding program. Another one's okay. called Joya um, or Sundown, it was the original name. Okay. And then there's the Bravo or Saluna. Pink Lady's the only one that has the same name just okay. about everywhere. But in America, it's called Crips Pink. In the USA, okay. it's called Crips Pink. So, because okay. they didn't take the trademark. We didn't, okay. there were a lot of mistakes made about, there were a lot of successes, but a lot of mistakes. But yeah. how do I want to remember? I want, to, I want people to, to think about innovation in agricultural products and horticultural yeah. products and, yeah. and in food and say, look, Pink yeah. Lady was the first, but it shouldn't be yeah. the last yeah. of um, a product that takes time. Uh, yeah. Apples take time to breed. Yeah. New varieties take time to breed. Yeah. And they take time to penetrate the market. And you know, you mentioned that there's there, there's a uh, scholarship for PhD uh, in honor of you in, in honor of your dad. Uh, what are your expectations, like in terms of research? Like, what what are you hoping people to do research uh, specifically in terms of your advice? Well, yeah. Okay. So the um, I I the things I've identified that are gaps in the in the um, in the research area around. Again, they'd mentioned about food quality. Okay. Um, I think there's also the uh, food industry needs to look at their business model okay. um, and uh, looking at regenerative agriculture is another thing. So how can, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be apples, the scholarship is for horticulture, but how can we use regenerative agriculture and agricultural okay. techniques to okay. reduce the amount of chemicals? Okay. Um, and looking at ways to the, like multi-cropping so that's okay. why we're looking at uh, like olives or wine or like okay. this kind of. So rather than just being an apple orchard, what mm. other sources of income or what different business models can uh, yeah. orchardists have yeah. in order that they can keep their orchard going and mm. they have a sustainable business model for their children or whoever buys the orchard yeah. or the next generation. The scholarship's open at the moment and uh, okay. we're just waiting to hear because yeah. it's only just been launched about what the first uh, recipient yeah. will be researching on, but it has yeah. to be a benefit to the industry. For sure. So, Thank you for your time, Helen. Have a great rest you of got, your day. That's, you're welcome. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed this conversation.